Now let's look at another example of vacuous virtue signalling. If you've had the misfortune of catching the Sky Bus from Tullamarine Airport to Melbourne, well, you would have heard not just a pointless acknowledgement of country message, but also heard about how the sovereignty of the land we know as Australia was never ceded. Yeah, this is the message they're playing for tourists and locals alike. Joining me now is Bella Diabra from the Institute of Public Affairs. She wrote about this issue for The Spectator. You contacted the company, Bella. What did they have to say for themselves? Thanks, Rita. Yes, I did. I had enough. You know, I've caught the sky bus a few times and it is a very <laughs> uncomfortable experience, um, made worse by this very, um, very angry welcome acknowledgement to country. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah. after the last trip, I just thought, look, let's just see what Skybus has to say. And I, I, I fired off a few questions I thought were quite reasonable, you know, about, you know, what is the point of this? What do you expect tourists to do about the fact that, you know, sovereignty was never ceded? Um, you know, are you giving any of your profits to, to the, the people from whom you think you stole the land? And, you know, questions like that. And I got a reply which was very polite, but um, it basically said, um, this is part of our reconciliation plan and we are never going to stop playing this 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 welcome to country. And if you'd like to get to an air, the airport in another way, you're welcome to do so. In other words, you know, you don't have to catch the bus, uh, which if anyone in Victoria knows there is no other way by public transport because there's no train, the only city in the world where there's no train between between the airport and the city. So look, they were very polite, but, um, <laughs> they, but, they, were very, but they were very firm. <laughs> Well, we did have a election promise of a train line from Tullamarine to the city, but uh, Dan Andrews kind of ran out of money for that as well. So, yeah, Melbourne is one of the very few major cities anywhere in the world without that. Uh, Bella, I've had several messages from irate customers. Some have even sent me their correspondence with this company and their experience mirrors yours. They've been effectively told to find another way to get to the airport. I mean, that seems like a very bizarre business strategy to me. Does this venture receive any taxpayer support for the service they provide? Um, they don't receive taxpayer support, but I but I did note that um, they received a very large con contract from the Andrews government, um, and they actually run 30% of the buses uh -huh. in in Melbourne at the moment. So I think you know we can we can uh, put those two pieces of information together and, and arrive at the conclusions about um, why they might be so so keen to to uh, to play this kind of propaganda on the bus. Um, but you know it really does reflect just how much uh, corporations in this country have been beguiled by wokery in that it's it's no longer enough just to, to have a bus to run a bus company. You know, you have to have a greater cause. You have to close the gap. You have to end global poverty and, you know, stop global boiling. Um, you know, and if that if they think that they can achieve that by making a, 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 a an angry announcement on the bus, then, then, then you know, they, they have no idea what they're doing. Um, and it's just, you know, it's it's getting almost impossible to, to avoid uh, in this country now. If you play your cards right, you get the sky bus, oh. and then you get on a Qantas flight, and you get the you know get you get the the, the virtue signalling on Qantas as well. So mm -hmm. you know, I think everyone's getting very tired of it. And I think that's part of the sentiment against the race-based referendum because I think most people want less of this and just more genuine equality and assimilation as opposed to just having racial privilege and racial messaging shoved down our throats. Now, I want to ask you, you're an education expert. Uh, we've learned that students in years 7 to 10 are going to be taught about Indigenous Australians' experience of European colonisation under a proposed overhaul of the school curriculum. Bella, I mean, this sounds like more political indoctrination in the curriculum, and I would have thought we've had enough of that already. Rita, you're absolutely right. It's exactly the same of the same. It's exactly the same that they've been getting through the national curriculum. Um, you know, the IPA has done uh, years of work on, on the national curriculum. In fact, I did a report on it um, earlier this year and talked a lot about um, how the, the uh, Indigenous Australian history is taught to Australians, and it's just through the single narrative uh, it's a single narrative that, you know, the first fleet constituted an invasion and that um, everything since colonisation has been dispossession, massacre and genocide. So so the the New South Wales curriculum really works, reflects what's in the national curriculum, and, and that is exactly the same. So this is this is not big news. I mean, this, um, this kind of black armband history has been in the New South Wales curriculum for a long time. All they've done is just put it in a, in a central place 
Um, they've also taken out civics and citizenship. Mm. Um, and and the worst thing about this new this new syllabus is that you can pretty much go through your whole schooling system um, and have no idea about why Australia was founded um, and the Enlightenment. You you you, you can yeah. you can sort of bypass the Industrial Revolution. You'll have no idea about the Westminster system. You'll have no idea about the foundations of Western civilization. But you will know a lot about colonization, the effect well, of that, colonization Bella, all on, of that, on Aboriginals. All of that is. All of that is evil. I mean, th th this curriculum is designed for kids to be ashamed of their country. There's nothing good. It's all negative. It's it's not realistic. And you know what? This black armband view was around even when I was at school. And we're talking a long time ago. And uh, it's only got progressively worse. Bella, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for joining me tonight.